Okay, so, uh, I, I'm, oh, everybody's here. I was just, oh gosh, where do I begin? If it wasn't for this man here. Wait, who is this guy? Oh, how did you oh, get in my oh. kitchen? <laughs> What's happening right now? Well, you were invited. I don't know about this guy. <laughs> We totally did. We were just, oh, let me introduce you. This is my good friend, um, Dr. Robert Lester. They found me on the street. I found you on the street. Wandering it's, around. It's, well, you know, tell us. Where, you know, I know that you were head of the watch program, head of pediatrics endocrinology at UCSF. Oh, I was never the head. No, okay. I was, I was just a peon in the grand scheme of things. But I did run the obesity program. Okay, ran the obesity program. And six years ago, I met you across the street at John Muir Hospital. My husband, um, Dr. Lance Gershon, was a pediatrician. He says, you got to meet this guy. He's as crazy as you are around sugar. And of course, you know, uh, well, you want to, I'm going to stir this up, the polenta I got going. Maybe you can So if you don't know Cindy's story, it's very simple. <laughs> she used to weigh 100 pounds more than she does today. Yes. She figured out what was wrong, she changed her own diet, said, oh my God, if I could do it, maybe I could help other people. She changed her restaurant's diet. People lost weight, people came back, people loved the food, Yes. and Cindy didn't know why. I gave a talk across the street 16 years ago, and she found out why, and she cried. And she actually sat on me for three hours and wouldn't <laughs> let me out of it John Miller Medical Center. Help, basically pumping me for information yes. about why she lost 100 pounds and kept it off. If you want to lose 100 pounds and keep it off, watch. Absolutely. But you know, I want you to talk. We're going to be making this amazing meal from our cookbook because Rob and I did this together. We he did. gives the science and then I give my story and then we have these recipes. And it's not about never, ever having any sugar. We are not like that. No, we it are is, not the sugar Nazis. We are not the sugar Nazis. No, not at all. But we say sugar should not be in your food. Here's what I say. OK. I'm uh, for can dessert. You cook? Can you cook? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm for dessert. For dessert. I am not for dessert for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Okay. This is lunch. And there is no sugar on this table. OK. So we got here our ricotta cheese. So go ahead. Okay. This is on what page on that? Ooh, let me open the book. Oh. Oh, you know, this man's mind is rock <laughs> solid. I wouldn't remember my own name if I had like, to remind myself every single day. Page okay. 284 of our cookbook. Okay, so that was ricotta. This is spinach. And we um, that's from our garden and outside. We have our own. This is farm to taste. This is Monterey Jack, and people out there are saying, wait a second, that's fat. Mm. We'll talk about fat in just a minute. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we've got Parmesan. Par Parmesan. Parmesan, not Parmigiano, because that's Italian. This is American. And finally, feta. I don't know about this, man. I don't know. Okay. I don't know, he's awesome. We there learned we so much, and we just thought you were a doctor. <laughs> Um, potato. Well, I, I'm a doctor, but I cook. Oh, I cook. You do. Okay. Indeed. All right, Rose. Well, you so got. You got to cook. You got to cook, right? If, if you, you want to be healthy, you got to cook. You if you don't know how to cook, you are hostage to the food industry for the rest of your life. So there was something that you said 16 years ago that resonated with me, which is why I'm in this school. Hold on. I think <laughs> we have not. Yet. <laughs> Is this like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood? I, I think so. That's so good. Hey! Hey! hey we're we're live. Live. Yeah. We got a guest. Got another somebody, somebody on our street. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. to see you. <laughs> you, know, you never know who's going to show up. Come on, Dominic. Come on over. you got to be in between us to say hello. Okay. So that you can be on our microphone. So this is Dominic. We're all friends. And Dominic, tell them who you are, Dominic Machi. I am uh, Dominic Monkey, the Director of Food and Nutrition Services and Warehouse for the Mount Diablo Unified School District. And we're all friends, and we're all here to make sure that our kids get fed well. Absolutely. And they learn how to cook. So we, I was just telling Dr. Lustig, he told me three things. Tell him what it was, the three things that you had to do to be able to take responsibility. I don't know. What were they? <laughs> <laughs> you said there was no way to take responsibility for your health 
unless you had the education, the skills, and accessibility to the food. Indeed. So bottom line, if you don't know you have a problem, you can't fix a problem. If you don't have access to the solution, you can't fix a problem. And lastly, you have to have the will. We're going to give you all three right now. Okay. There okay. you go. You want to sit here and watch this, or do you want? I'm going to have you stuff this salmon. How's that? We're going to work together as a team. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what we're doing here. Filling. He's got the filling, nice. and I have just roasted up some nice peppers, and he is going to roast. Yep. We're all working together here as a team. You are now going to take these peppers that are a little soft. Mm -hmm. You're going to take this, mm -hmm. and you're going to stuff peppers like this. See one, do one, teach one. That's what we go. learn at the hospital. I like that. Okay. So you're going to put, I want I got all it. four in there. I got you it. are going to take this. You are going to do the stuffed salmon. Okay. You're going to start. I like to leave the ends for people that don't want any cheese. Mm -hmm. I want to cut open here and then I want to stuff the cheese. And then you're going to put it So we're just going to make here. a pocket? You're going to make a pocket. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, tell me a little bit about your background. You just got an award um, or inducted into. So in November of 2021, you can, you I, was, can work uh, and talk. I was inducted into the Disciples of Escalier, um, which Ooh. is the largest gastronomic or, or chef society in the world, in 26 countries and chefs from all over the world. And I'm actually the first school food service director in the United States to be inducted. Um, this is in... in respects to uh, Auguste Scoffier, who was the first modern chef uh, in the uh, late 1800s, who developed so many recipes that we use today. Many of the things that you see today came from Scoffier. So, um, and the brigade, myself, pardon in me? the brigade, all restaurants. All brigades, yes. So, which is a uh, infrastructure of cooks inside the kitchen to make all this beautiful food, which is kind of what we are here. We're a brigade so, right now. The we reason, are a brigade. The reason the French are famous for their food are two people. Number one, Jean-Anselm Briat Savarin, who was the one who said, show me what you eat and I will tell you what you are. Mm, that's deep. And Escoffier, who basically ran the very first cooking school, the Cordon Bleu, in uh, Paris and to this day, France has the most wonderful cooking tradition. We here in America have no cooking tradition. And that is why we have abdicated to processed food. We're going to fix that on the show right now. So tell us about the history of, uh, I think that's good. Okay. Just enough. We're going to go like this. OK? And then we're going to hit it with the tomatoes. A little olive oil, the little oil that Rose has over there. I have some oil, some little avocado oil. Marvelous. I know. We're yes. using avocado oil to make with you. Yeah. So you're just going to tomatoes. Can we talk while you're doing that? Absolutely. I, I, I'm really I'm feeling very intense about that comment. Show me what you eat, and I'll show you what you are. Well, they got, that got truncated to you are what you eat, and that is wrong. You are not what you eat. You are what you do with what you eat. That is, how your body processes food into energy, into proteins to run the cells. The bottom line is, you are not what you eat, because if you were what you eat, we would all be just a pile of garbage. Well, there's some truth to that. We are a pile of garbage. And we have the medical bills to show for it. We are going to show you how to clean your carburetor. We're going to show you how to make your engine run better. We're going to show you how to make your mitochondria, the little energy burning factories inside your cells, work better. And when your mitochondria work better, you work better. Take a look at this. Heart works better. Your body works better. Your brain works better. Look at that. You do better in school. You actually prevent dementia. You prevent cancer. All because of mitochondria. All the diseases we suffer from today, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver disease, uh, cancer, dementia, polycystic ovarian disease, hypertension, these are all diseases of the mitochondria. 
And the single thing that damages mitochondria more than anything else is sugar. Sugar is the sand in the gasoline that destroys the engine. So and we actually you, have the data to show. Rob, um, mitochondria? Like, mitochondria. like what, is, what, is it, what does it do what to the look? cell? What does it do? So they used to be bacteria. They joined with us billions of years ago to become our energy burning factories. They even have their own DNA, mitochondrial DNA. We what? made a- Inside of our cells, inside we have our cells. mitochondria, we have which has a different DNA than our cell does? That's right. And that's, that's actually how you can tell who the father is. Indeed, no, I that, that is exactly how you tell. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So the mitochondria comes from the dad? That mitochondria comes from the mom. The mitochondria comes from the mom. So how can you tell who the dad is? Well, because the, the dad has uh, the Y chromosome goes through the mom and ends up in the baby. And so you can actually tell the difference by looking at the mitochondrial DNA versus the general DNA. Wow. Okay. Oh, so so cool. do we, when we're eating processed food and sugar, does it kill off the mitochondria? Is it, this is it, this the problem that we're having with it, disease? It damages the mitochondria. So the mitochondria are, you know, they look like little logs okay. uh, under the electron microscope, and they have little um, uh, like little nooks and crannies okay. that are made of fat, okay. and the specific fats that make it are the fats that are on this table. So, so you're actually improving your mitochondria by eating this stuff as opposed to what's in processed food, which is a lot of trans fats and a lot of omega-6 fats, which are not in mitochondria. OK, so I am using the avocado oil. Which is perfect. Because I was told that you should not use the seed oils. That's right. OK, now avocado oil as to seed oils, Tell me what the difference is, and so, why, is this omega-3s? So it's not omega-3s so much as it is monounsaturates, kind of like olive oil. Oh, okay. Okay, it's got, but it's got a higher smoking point, So which I'm, is good. oh, by the way, I, I put that on our, um, what is this, Rose? Romanesco. Romanesco from the garden. We it love literally Romanesco. the best vegetable on earth. It's like a combination of broccoli and cauliflower, right? It is right. so so good. And Brussels sprouts. Yeah. This is in season, grown right here. Season. So I'm putting it to roast with our bell peppers that are stuffed with our cheeses and our salmon. And this is going to be amazing. And then I'm going to show you what I got over here. So just a little oil and a little salt, right? That's it. Right. Right. So just to ask a question, Rob. So in the difference between the avocado oils are much different than, than olive oil, good quality olive oil. You can get here in California. Is there a big difference? Not a tremendous amount of difference other than the smoking point. So, uh, to backtrack a little, there's Let's this move thing. this way closer. So that there's this thing called trans fat. And trans fat we now know is poison. It's consumable poison. It is the single worst thing you can put in your body. And we were awash in it for about a hundred years. The very first trans fat was Crisco, 1911. By 1920, virtually all baked goods in America were baked with trans fat. And the reason that all of the uh, baking companies decided to use trans fat was because it made the baked goods last longer because the bacteria couldn't chew it up. The bacteria couldn't digest it. And that's why we had the 10-year-old Twinkie, because of trans fats. Because the bacteria outside could not break the trans double bond. Well, guess what? Our mitochondria in our bodies are refurbished bacteria Right? They have their own bacterial DNA. Well, we don't have that enzyme to break that double bond either. So the trans fats just line our arteries, line our livers, and cause chronic metabolic disease like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, etc. So trans fats were a disaster. Now, the good news is that the FDA finally, finally, after 50 years, finally agreed that trans fats were poison, and they took uh, trans fats off the this FDA's brass list. Ago? They knew this 50 years ago and they didn't, it took them 50 years? One scientist knew it back in 1957, but he was silenced. And so things continued There's until also 1988. There's also a loophole. 
There's many loopholes. <laughs> By the way, so this polenta, it's one cup of polenta to five cups of water. And this will be our whole grain. You can see the, I don't know if you can see the whole grain, and I'm cooking it a very long time so that it becomes kind of creamy. Mm -hmm. All it is is water and a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I had to just interject that because mm -hmm. we're cooking. We're cooking. We're cooking. We're cooking. We're cooking. We're cooking. Okay. All right, so follow, yeah, get me going with those. So uh, trans fats are a disaster. Now, they're coming out of our food, but are they? No. The answer is you can make trans fats at home. All right, you don't want to, but you do. Yeah. All you have to do is heat your oil past the smoking point. And what will happen is that will put enough energy into that, trans, uh, into that double bond and flip it, and now you've got a trans fat. So, so you don't want to do olive oil. Do I don't cook with olive oil. I, I use rice bran oil. Or I use the olive oil. I mean the olive oil. And is coconut, it coconut, coconut oil? oil has Avocado it. oil, peanut oil, sesame oil all have high smoking points. Olive oil it is great on a salad too. because you don't have to heat it. Right. Exactly. Or you put it on it after it's the after, pasta after, after, after it's, it's cooked. cooked. That's after right. it's cooked. That's right. Okay, and that's why you don't see olive oil right here with us. You see the avocado oil and then you see I think we have there's peanuts somewhere. I put it somewhere else. Oh, right? you put it somewhere else. Yeah. And this is all to make your mitochondria work better. Happy mitochondria, happy body. Happy you. Happy so, me. So mitochondria is bacteria, or well, it is part of the bacteria? No, they're now mitochondria are ours. They're okay. not bacteria anymore. They've lost a whole bunch of genes. So they only have the genes that power the cell, that turn food into ATP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It is the chemical energy of the cell. Every cell in your body has to make ATP in order to function. And every cell in your body has mitochondria. Hey, what else improves mitochondria and makes it stronger and happy besides food? Besides food? Yeah. Um, Omega-3s. Okay, yeah, but besides things that you ingest. Um, exercise? Yes! <laughs> That's true. Exercise. Every time that we are moving our bodies, our mitochondria is happy. And you don't necessarily have to have a gym membership and be really hard for hours. It's literally move your body. Move a little bit more every day, and your mitochondria are happy. And, and happy. you make more. You make and you make fresh ones better that work better. That's right. So that's one of the reasons why exercise is good for you. Yeah. Is because it makes more and better yes. mitochondria and helps clear out old, used, and spent mitochondria. Yes. Um, question. I have, you know, they say that, you know, your liver gets sick from eating too much sugar and you get fatty liver syndrome, and which is similar to, and you could talk to um, cirrhosis of the liver and fatty liver. But when I say, oh, if you, you can cleanse your liver, you can do a juice A fast. juice cleanse for the it, liver. It, okay, tell Please. me how you Please. really clean your liver <laughs> yes, once if you've been told by your doctor you have fatty liver. How do you really clean it? So 45% of adults, not obese adults, 45% of all American adults have fatty liver disease. Today. You don't have to be fat on the outside you don't to, have be, to fat be fat on the inside. 10% right. right. of children in the United States. No, 20%. 20%. Worldwide. That's worldwide. No, 20% of children in America now? have fatty liver, yes. Uh, okay, a, where did they get that from? Where did, they get, where did that come from? So the question is, where does fatty liver come from? Yes. And the answer is, prior to 1975, if you saw fat in somebody's liver, that was from alcohol. So only it's alcohol like, has only got alcohol. type 2 diabetes? Mm -hmm. no, alcohol was a primary driver of type 2 diabetes before 1975. Now, are we talking about diabetes or fatty liver? Both. They, they go together. They, they, they go, go together. They go together. They so go together. cirrhosis of the liver and fatty liver syndrome are really the same thing? Indeed. Well, so if you have fatty liver, you are 3.5 times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Mm. Okay. And the reason is because now your, fat, your liver doesn't work. Your pancreas, which makes the insulin, yes. Has to make more in order to make the liver do its job. That burns out the pancreas, and now you've got type two diabetes. So pancreatitis is that? What no, that's a different that's disease. Okay. That's a different phenomenon. But fatty liver disease leads to beta cell, which are the cells in the pancreas that make insulin, mm -hmm. beta cell burnout, and that's type two diabetes. Is if you clear the fat out of your liver, you reduce your risk for type so, two diabetes. So how do you reverse that? Okay. So. You have to clear the fat. Okay. How do you clear fat out of your liver once it's made? 
answer well, two ways. You, a lot of people think, oh, less fat. I'm yep. going to go fat free and I'm going to clean out my liver. And that's exactly that is the wrong exactly answer. Exactly the wrong answer. The wrong answer. Because that's not sense, what makes sense. Like you think logically that that makes sense, but sorry, Carrie, wrong. That's no, exactly that's what's wrong. Okay. People think the fat in the liver came from the fat in your diet. No, and that is absolutely wrong. We now know that that is not where it comes from. Where it comes from is your liver's conversion of sugar into fat. Oh, sugar makes fat? Sugar becomes fat in your liver. Well, sugar is in all processed food. And that's why everyone's got fatty liver disease. Okay, okay. Can you guys come closer here? Because we have to, we have to like huddle. We're gonna huddle now <laughs> so that we can, and we're talking to, we're talking to we're you. We're talking to you. We you. want you to hear this. <laughs> I want to make it very clear. A sports drink does not give your child energy. It takes away the energy from it, your child. Yeah, it does. So the sports drink company will say, the sugar in the sports drink is ready and quick energy. Well, it is true that the sugar in the sports drink, if you put it in a bomb calorimeter and exploded it, would give you four calories per gram. That's true. But we are not bomb calorimeters. We are people. And our cells are not bomb calorimeters. They are cells. And they have mitochondria that have to work. And bomb calorimeters don't. It turns out that that sugar actually inhibits energy production because it inhibits mitochondria. It inhibits three, count them, three separate enzymes in the mitochondria. It inhibits AMP kinase, which is the fuel gauge on the liver cell, which basically gooses the mitochondria to make more. But if it's not working, guess what? It can't goose. It inhibits ACADL, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase long chain. Don't worry, you won't be tested. But that is the first <laughs> enzyme that helps cleave fat into energy. And finally, it inhibits a third enzyme called CPT1, carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, which is the enzyme that regenerates carnitine, which is the shuttle mechanism by which uh, fats get into your mitochondria for burning in the first place. So if you consume excess sugar, you are actually preventing your cells from being able to burn sugar and carbohydrate and fat. And so what does it do? It takes all the excess and turns it into fat to get it out, to get it exported. And that's why your triglyceride levels in your blood go up. Or maybe they don't go up. Maybe it stays in the liver, and now you've got a lipid droplet. Now you've got fatty liver disease, and now you are on your way to type 2 diabetes. So, choose. Either way, you're screwed. You're screwed. Either way, you can have heart disease on one end, or you can have fatty liver and type 2 diabetes on the other hand. But bottom line is, if you poison your mitochondria, don't expect anything good to happen. So, do we have any other mitochondrial poisons that we know of? Sure, how about cyanide? That's a mitochondrial poison, and it works in exactly the same way, by making those mitochondria not be able to burn energy. So, bottom line, you want to consume cyanide? No. I don't think so. You want to consume sugar? Unfortunately, sugar is a little bit, shall we say, more fun than cyanide. <laughs> but but you're ultimately doing the same. That's the part that drives me crazy. And this show that we're doing is going to be shown over at Rossmar. And people say, who's your audience? And we say, oh, it's those young mothers and fathers with their children so that they can treat their children better. But guess who's watching your children when mom and dad go out on Friday and Saturday night? Grandparents. grandparents. And what do grandparents do to their grandchildren? Grandparents are pushers. I don't know. Why don't you, I, no, I'm not saying anything. Why don't you tell me, well, Grandma? You, know, you got to keep. Well, what do you do to the grandkids? Should we mention because maybe, maybe the work that we've done here at Roswell? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah I, just, I, just want, I want to finish saying grandparents, juice, cookies, candy, cereals, things that are easy for you to hand to a grandkid because it gets a nice smile on their face, is doing a frown on their liver. It's, are, it's very simple, people. Food is not love. Food is food. Food is food. Love is love. Food is not love. And if you mistake the two, 
you're going to get sick. Well, and I think one of the things that we did here at Mount Diablo Unified School District, we reduced in, in collaboration with uh, the organization Eat Real by just eliminating flavored milk and fruit juice, which is a, sometimes to be a concentrate or 100% juice, but still processed. We reduced 10 pounds of sugar intake per student for the year. Wow. 270,000 pounds of sugar out of the Mount Diablo Unified School District in one year. Did you just do and that? And it was head? cheaper. <laughs> and Thank it you. was cheaper. <laughs> yeah. No more chocolate milk. When people fight for chocolate milk for their children, or they say, hey, it's 100% organic, I don't care if your grandmother grew it in her yard, picked it, kissed it, and then juiced it. It's still bad, right? Indeed. You took out what part of the fruit is the antidote to the fructose, right. and the fructose is the problem, and you're the one that taught me that. So, to make a very long story short, people say, what about fruit? Fruit is good for you, right? Fruit is good for you. Fruit juice is not. Now, what's the difference between fruit and fruit juice? One thing, the fiber. Now, people think fiber is what you throw in the garbage after you juice the fruit, that it has no value because our intestines don't metabolize it. That's true. They don't metabolize it. The bacteria do. You have 10 trillion cells in your body. You have 100 trillion bacteria in your intestine. Your bacteria outnumber you 10 to 1. You are just a big bag of bacteria with legs. So you're saying <laughs> protect the liver, feed the gut. How do you feed the gut? You feed the gut with fiber. fiber. That is the food for the bacteria. And when you feed your gut, your gut is happy. And when you starve your gut, guess what? Your gut feeds on you. It will, those bacteria will actually strip the mucin layer right off your intestinal epithelial cells, exposing them, denuding them, and making it much more likely that those bacteria will cause inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, a phenomenon we allergies. call leaky gut, which causes allergies. Peanut allergies. When we were kids, there was no peanut allergies. And now everyone has a peanut allergy, and the reason is because they have leaky gut. Because of the lack of fiber in the food. Not to mention diverticulitis and Crohn's, and you could go on and on with the Indeed. issues. Okay, that I did not get my answer to my fatty liver, how do you clean the fat out of the liver? Can we go back? I just want to make sure. And I also want to know how quickly it happens. So we did a study at UCSF. And we're talking to those people right there. Mm -hmm. Those people right there. See their eyes, we can see their eyes. Talk right there, I want to make sure they hear you. We did a study at UCSF where we took 43 children from our obesity program who all had metabolic syndrome, Latino and African American, all high sugar consumers, all with obesity plus at least one other comorbidity, that is, you know, high blood glucose or high triglycerides or fat in their liver or the stuff around the back of the neck, acanthosis, nitrogen. That, that where it looks like right, this I remember when I came skin. to see you and the mother said, I remember you put on a, on a young African American boy and the mother was there and you asked who watches him, that was when you talked about the grandmother and the grandmother was giving him Sunny D yep. and, and you said, and you can see this and she goes, and this, I wanted to cry. She said, I keep trying to scrub that off. You need, and you looked at her and you said, honey, it's not from the outside. It it's from her. the out inside. That's right. That, that mother, I mean, I cry when I think about it. She was so like, oh my God. And here's this little boy who's like 12 years old with this dark ring thinking, and, he, and I mean, it was things that were being done to him out of love. Indeed. But it was harming him. Okay, sorry. She was very intense about this because I'm her daughter. I'll tell you what that was like uh, another another time. Because it was a similar thing. You were giving me juice, and there was a lot. There was a lot of issues that happened with that. So yeah. Okay. This well, is where her intensity comes from. Us, uh, you know, we're dealing here. Yes. I want okay, to know how to clean the liver. This yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> a bell. We're in school. Yeah. Raise your hand. Ask questions. So, um, we took 43 children with metabolic syndrome with fat in their liver. And what we did was we took the sugar out of their diet for nine days. Added sugar. Added sugar. 
We took the percent calories from they sugar. They still had fruit, right? They could have fruit. From 28% down to 10%. We took the pastries out, we put the bagels in. We put, took the sweetened yogurt out, we put the baked potato chips in. We took the chicken teriyaki out, we put the turkey hot dogs in. So we didn't give them good food, we gave them lousy food. We gave them I was gonna say, food. I think you could do a little bit better than We that. could, but we didn't on purpose. <laughs> okay. And the reason was because we didn't want to give them better food because we were trying to show that it was the sugar that was the problem. Mm. Oh. So what we did was we took sugar out and we added starch. Mm -hmm. Not that starch is good, but compared to sugar, it's a walk in the park. Yeah, so, right for your body, for your intestines. And we gave them a scale. And every day we'd call them up on the phone, yeah. what'd you weigh? And if it turned out they were losing weight, we said, eat more! <laughs> in order to keep their weight constant. I wish constant. somebody would do that to me. <laughs> just, yeah, the kids love I mean, you should try it. Maybe you should try it. <laughs> every aspect of their metabolic health improved. Every aspect of their metabolic health improved. And the fat in their liver disappeared. Okay, how long? How long was this thing? 10 days. 10 days? 10 days. 10 days. Did they exercise? No, no exercise. 10 days? 10 days. So you get it's rid so of the fat in your liver in 10 by days. stopping eating sugar. That's it. Add Added sugar. sugar. That's right. You it's don't flush it with a drink. Nope. Okay, I just want you, you to can, know that. You don't, don't have flush, flush it. it with juice. Well, you, can, you can also, for the adults in the room, you can also get rid of the fatty liver two other ways. One's called intermittent fasting. And yes. one of the reasons intermittent fasting works is because it preferentially burns the fat in the liver first while you're fasting. So and is fasting like like for 12 or 14 hours? For about 14 to 16 14 hours. to 16 is longer, yeah. Oh, 16. okay. okay? Yeah. So that gives your liver a chance to catch up. Yeah, okay. And then the third way is exercise. Mm -hmm. Because that will goose that. your mitochondria, and then your mitochondria will burn that fat off. So, but you need the first thing you do, the first thing, it's like, I'm not going to just choose one. The first thing you do is stop the sugar. Stop the sugar. Stop the sugar first. Read the label. How many grams? Zero. Well, unadded. Right now, un un added, added sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Added sugar. Okay. If it's part of like a meal or a snack. If the once a week you're having dessert at grandma's, oh, sorry, and sorry. Dessert. Okay. Girl, I'm giving you an out. <laughs> this is for you. This is for This me. is for her. I Bottom line is, dessert should be safe and rare. Okay, it and should amazing. not be every meal. And amazing. And amazing. And amazing. Right. Yeah. That's right. Butters. Make it special. Make it worth it. Make your taste buds sing with joy. Okay, but if you eat sugar with every meal, they're never going to sing with joy. And you're dosing. I see these kids walking around the campus dosing all day long with a sports drink. They're constantly drinking them all day long in the classroom. And, and then drinks. eating yeah, taquitos, um, taquitos, or those really tachis. 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 <laughs> Does it drive me? It drives me completely. I asked them, the kids today to give me an example of how you process food, and that's what one of the girls said. I didn't even know what it was. She was all taquitos or whatever. I was like, totally, whatever, whatever that is. I'm, I'm sure it is. <laughs> so I just want to show you. So everybody, can you see the little the lantern? Creamy That's nice. so I'm going to hold it oh, right to this it. camera here. This was Good. one cup of polenta with five cups of water. And you just keep the lid off. You can see all the water is evaporating. But it opens up the kernel and it makes it creamy and just a little salt. This is going to be the base with those stuffed tomatoes and the tomato sauce on there with a little oregano. Uh, is your mouth? My oh, mouth is oh, watering right I'm now. Already, uh, I am just like, I'm oh excited. my gosh, excited. And how hard was that to make, chefs? Uh, oh, you could say I was sweating. <laughs> I was sweating over here. Nothing. This is like nothing. And then you pour it in the pan, stick it in the fridge the next day. It's, it's firm. Cut it in squares. Put a little olive oil. And, or put it in the oven and you may and you and you crispen it up. The kids love this with scrambled eggs on the side. So, so good. you have they so That's amazing. Good. That sounds so good. I they have another question actually. Okay, ask him. I'm doing the food part. He's you guys are doing the side. The thing I love about you, Cindy, is you don't ever have to look at the food to make sure it's cooking. I know. Gosh. I'm always looking and seeing. <laughs> yeah. I know. Just know. sit in the front row. Okay, what's your... Rosie, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I want to talk a little bit about weight. And wait, I want to just show wait. you this. 
Okay, do you love that? Look at this. These are almost, ah, oh, and the tomatoes and the stuffing. It's, uh, it's so Cruz delicious. Cruz salivating. Oh my God, look at this. This is, and the, it's just amazing. Got a little more to go, and I want to show you the peppers. Look at these. Ooh. Oh my God, the stuff, oh okay. sorry, here's the stuffed peppers. This is going to You're going to you wish. Think. Longer than you think. Julia Child, eat your heart. Longer oh yes, okay, oh longer than I think. <laughs> They tell me I do everything quick. Cooking, she's, running, she is everything. She's a quick girl. I'm a quick girl. And then I just want to show you that this, all of this is going to be done at the same time. Mm. Our Romanesco with our Brussels sprouts. Just a little bit of, my mouth is so watery. I can hardly talk. I know. So delicious. So yeah. delicious. Okay, keep going. Ask the question. Ask the question. Yeah, I want to talk about weight. Um, for many reasons, I think there's a lot of, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, like visually you can see it, there's a lot of stigma, there's a lot of talk about it, there's a lot of judgment about it. And oftentimes when I'm talking to people about the way that they are eating or their sugar or whatever, they're like, well, I mean, I haven't gained any weight, here, so I'm fine. We need to huddle a little bit more so that what? we can. Who can says we got to huddle? I say. The cameraman, the cameraman said, said huddle? Huddle. huddle. Okay. Huddle. Well, you know, it, it, Thank you. Because if it was just you saying it, I don't, I don't know. I don't believe you. But if he says it, then it's I, another I'm daughter okay. thing. What can I say? It's another daughter. Okay. So, um, sorry. Uh, okay. So about about weight. So it is. You, you can see it, but so many times we're like, well, I don't have a weight problem, or my kids don't have a weight problem, or we don't have to think about that. We don't have to worry about it. And. This is what, there, this is a big topic and a big issue and there's a lot of different ways that we could go about it, but just specifically about sugar. How is it that some people can eat sugar, like myself, and like added sugar, right? Like if I start the morning with, a, you know, a donut and a, and a coffee full of sugar, I'm like stoked for about an hour and then I'm like a nightmare and I'm eating all day long, I have crazy cravings, I'm like moody, like it is very clear to me that that does not work for my system. And I didn't know it for a long time. I just, that's the way it was. Then you have this to counteract that and this to counteract this and you know, whatever. But I see other people and then I'm eating all day. I'm, I'm that person. But I see other people, they'll have a sugary drink and a donut in the morning and they're fine all day long. Like and they actually eat less, like they're not hungry. What is that phenomenon? And why so, is it different from person to person? So what we know, mm -hmm. and it's a really good question. Though, Thank you. Uh, what we know is that the people who do poorly are insulin resistant. Oh, yeah, for sure. They are not you responding can tell, well right? to You can tell, this is how you can tell. They, because they are insulin resistant, they are uh, made worse by refined carbohydrate. Yes. And they get all sorts of CNS symptoms like inability to concentrate, uh, irritability, yeah. um, um, they get angry yeah. uh, much more easily. There are all sorts of, you know, shall we say, soft signs. Yeah. Wow, you know we got those kids in the resistance. class. Yeah. We have such a problem with kids after brunch and kids after lunch because so they're they're yeah. um, right. So it's been shown. It's been shown that um, soft drinks, mm -hmm. as an example, uh, increase behavior problems in five-year-olds, and soft drinks increase violence in middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And soft drinks is the same thing with sugar. I mean, you're not just saying right. you know, that sports drinks, right. that's chocolate milk, that's any kind of Indeed. liquid. And but you'll get these kids that that are underweight. And we'll tell them you, know, you shouldn't see eat that. And they can you be underweight and eat all that sugar. There's well, a phenomenon. It's something. It's something. What, it's what something. is it? Yes. Well, it has to do with those brain mitochondria. Okay. Those brain mitochondria are not processing energy like they should. Now, you know, the brain is the biggest utilizer of energy there is. Okay. And the brain has no place to store energy. Okay. So you have to have the best mitochondria available 24-7, 365, to run your brain properly. So what happens if you poison those mitochondria? You get behavioral problems. Mm -hmm. You get cognition problems. Mm -hmm. You get school learning problems. Mm -hmm. And so eventually, when you're 65, you get dementia too. 
So the first thing you ask when a child is having a behavior problem is what did you have for breakfast and what are you eating? You, you taught me that many years ago right. and I will tell you a hundred percent of the time it wasn't, you know, eggs and potatoes and fruit. <laughs> you know? That's not the kind of breakfast that causes problems. Well, the problem is that the National School Breakfast Program, which 29% of all children in America are currently eating right now, yeah. is a bowl of Fruit Loops and a glass of orange juice. When you add up the sugar in those two items, that's 41 grams of added sugar. And it's just breakfast. The American Heart Association says that for children, the upper limit for added sugar should be three teaspoons. That would be 12 grams, and that's for the whole day. So okay. these kids are more than triple overdosed, and it's just breakfast. What do you think's happening? Yeah. Well, and that doesn't happen here, not the other. No, it doesn't. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and that's why you are watching us because we have the answer. And if you follow what we did here, yeah. you will lose 100 pounds and keep it off and have it just as much energy as Cindy. Yeah, and Rose. She is wild. I, I am. I think right. your, your, your question about you know behavioral issues with students, sometimes they don't even eat breakfast, which is another yeah. most, most don't. Most, most have not had breakfast. That's usually where a lot of behavioral problems yeah. can happen. But uh, like you said, Rob, about the United States Department of Agriculture School Breakfast Program, it's very uh, brain driven. We yeah. just need to make sure it's whole grains and as less yes. sugar as possible. Yes. That's our, always our goal here. Well, and also, we can't blame the school. I mean, we're supposed to, and being a teacher now, I'm supposed to raise your child. I'm yeah. supposed to feed your child. I'm supposed to make sure they have clean socks and underwear. I'm supposed, I mean, they send kids to school here, and a lot is put on teachers. A lot is put on the school system, yep. and you have to make sure that they're getting their breakfast, their snack, and then their lunch, and sometimes their dinner after. after four meals school. a day. Sometimes. Four meals a day. So we're putting a lot on the system, and I see being at the high school, and you think, oh, these kids don't have any money. Rosie, how many of our kids show up to class with a Starbucks and pastry? A lot. It's a lot crazy. of them. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. They try, they they hide it from me though because I get oh, a little bit I'm crazy. Just... Get out of my classroom. So a lot of times they're bringing in <laughs> yes. food from where a retail food yeah. service yeah. outlet or operation. Yeah. Um, fresh basil, guys. I'm putting oof. fresh basil. Okay. We want to make sure that all of the food has has um it, it's it's from the smell, it's the taste, it's the aromas, it's its getting, uh, digestion starts in your mouth. And when your mouth starts it starts with, it, with a thought. With a no, thought, okay. Saying, with yeah. Digestion yeah. actually starts here. Yes. Okay, it starts it there. Yeah. And we have, what we do here in our school district is we have 17 gardens. We have a, a program. Maybe you could talk just a little bit about growing healthy kids. So we, we just started a, uh, a nonprofit organization here within our school district called the Growing Healthy Kids. And what that means is, we are one of very few school districts um, here in Mount Diablo Unified that actually uses school gardens as part of the Next Generation Science Center. So we put this in curriculum. And this is the one way that we've seen how to educate our students and begin to make the shift where if some of these items you have right here would just come directly right out of the garden, then now students who then eventually will teach their parents as well mm -hmm. how to just cook wholesome, natural food with no added sugars that we're just talking about. Exactly. And the kids eat it. And they, eat, and they, they it. eat it and they love it and we teach them again to go back. No personal responsibility if you don't have the education. Rosie teaches foods and nutrition. Then we also come in here and we teach them the skills. Skills in the kitchen. We take them out into the garden so they see where it comes from. Mm -hmm. And then I teach them how to make money out of it. <laughs> you know, because I owned a restaurant for 40 years and if you can't make money or you can't figure out how much this meal costs, because it's usually, those Starbucks drinks are $5. Do you know what I can, I can buy a chicken. I can get a whole chicken on sale for $5 and then pick veggies out there and for one Starbucks that's gonna make them crazy. We have a chicken and I wanna thank White Pony Express who goes around and picks up the thank food you. from, the, from the, the grocery stores that's still good and they donate 
and then they bring it here and we get a lot of our, our dairies and stuff and they know Chef Cindy does not take anything that's processed or anything that has added sugar, they want real food. So we have the accessibility, we have the skills, we have the school system, we have um, Dominic here, we hope to be We have Dominic to here. That's oh why that's why all of it's this is doable. Yes. All of it's possible is because it takes, a whole it takes an enterprising food services director who actually gets it. Yeah. yeah. And that's a rare commodity in today's uh, school system. Yeah, yeah. So it's really we're working on it. We're we working on it. Well I'm gonna say for Mount Gabby Unicorn, we're probably, you know, we are probably one of the most collaborative districts working with our teachers, working with fellow administrators, working, working with other outside community. community, outside organizations, and we're listening. And I think that's the most important thing that we're listening. And I just do want to say, I, I believe, I'm hoping the pandemic is behind us. I hope it will be hope. And I'd like to go ahead and say that we're going to bring salad bars back uh, in the fall of, of our new school year for the 22-23 school year. And have local farmers, group. that is, Dominic's goal. Right. So and you can take produce with the kids, the students grow in the gardens, that they can put that in the salad bar so they can see what they've grown and then they can share that with their fellow students, which I think is just a huge important. In order to make this not just a Mount Diablo phenomenon, but yes. a national phenomenon, we have to turn each school district into a food producing school district. Now, how do you do that when all of the um, uh, infrastructure, all of the um, uh, food preparation, all the lunch ladies have all been taken out of the schools? That is the job of a nonprofit that we have here in the Bay Area called Eat Real. And Eat Real worked with Dominic, with Cindy, with the Mount Diablo Unified School District to start this program to basically centralize food production for all 27 schools in yeah. the district. And that's yeah. 47. 47, 47. Sorry, 47 schools in the district. I was going to say, what? 47 working kitchens. And we now have 213 districts around the country that we are assisting in bringing the same business model in order to be able to provide our kids with real food. So don't say it can't be done because we're doing it all over the country. Keep your eye on us. We will bring the science, which is the education. We will bring the skills and the accessibility because if we don't have the school food system moving with us, not only do we teach your kids how to read and write, how to do business, we train their palates. And if you give us the opportunity, and I, that's why we had Congressman Desaigne and Congressman McGovern from, um, they are head of food and nutrition. They came out to see what we're doing. We said, we need the government USDA funding to support what we're doing and to get behind us. We need legislation that said, get the sugar and the processed food out. You are destroying the future and the liver and the health of our children. And get the CPG companies out of the way. Explain what that is. That's consumer packaged goods. That's basically anything you can buy in a box. Yep. Ooh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this. Okay, Which now we're talking the, magic. The, we're talking magic here. Man, okay, do you love it? Well, I'm hoping that we'll we hold the we'll hold the cafeteria open for exactly 30 <laughs> minutes for you all to come down, and get here, and sample some of this. Oh, now well, I got I'm, I'm hoping fresh that, uh, You know that right now the way we're treating our cafeterias is that they're outdoor spaces, they're outdoor classrooms, and yes. the, mm. the students. Now, which is a big shift and change, is that we're going to continue, even when the students go through the cafeteria line, they're still going through education, education. Uh, good nutrition. Education, education, skills, and accessibility. Absolutely. Then you can take responsibility, and we are going to keep showing you, we're going to keep driving it home, and I hope everybody that eats understands if you're concerned about our future, and this also ties into the environment too, because when we stop with all the processed food and we stop with commodity foods, mm -hmm. then we can diverse what we're make diverse crops, right? Mm -hmm. Which actually is what's driving a lot of Absolutely. the pollution. Corn, wheat, soy, sugar are what cause uh, strafing of the uh, uh, of the ground, of soil erosion, and contributing to enormous amounts of methane production. So, but I think, Cindy, for all those uh, out there, our, our guests for today, 
how, and you kind of made this look really easy, but how yeah. hard was it just to put together whole, natural, just nourish, nourishing food the way you just did? I mean, you didn't add any sugar, you didn't add anything. You just yeah. kind of put it somewhat together. Yeah. And how hard was that? Like nothing. Did you see how and many? And it's not because she's a chef. Yeah. <laughs> Even I could do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you Even do I have to have could the, do it. You do have to have a little bit of understanding, right? So you have to have a, a palate. skill set. You have to have a palate. And guess what? If you're eating sugar and processed food, you do not have a palate. In order to be able to taste this food, you need to move from sugar. And that's what we see with you, with me, with kids. Once you take your palate and you put all of the sugar in the processed food, you cannot taste the sweetness from that orange that you have right, those are blood oranges. You cannot taste the creaminess of that polenta. Those stuffed peppers with that tomato and that basil. Mm. Oh, you I mean, deaden, seriously. Like, you deaden everything because yeah. that's what yeah. processed food does. Right, yeah. but it only takes a few days, right? Seven, you get it out of your nine, body. Nine days. Nine, nine, days. nine days? Nine days. Okay, okay. It takes nine and don't days. Don't pick it back up. Nine days. I'm days. I'm telling you, do not pick it up. Your gut heals, it your liver cleanses, your mitochondria gets stronger, your brain fog clears up, your waistline goes back to what it, whatever it's supposed to be. Right. All the good things. All the good things. Oh my god, this is so good. Does this look so good, guys? Are we ready? Ready? Are we, okay, you guys ready? ready? Lunchtime. Right, yes, lunch time. baby. Oh my god. And the roast here here is the roasted bit. Okay, so this show was live. Did you see we chatted and we changed the world while the food was in the oven? Did you see any sauteing going on? Mm, no. no. Everything was roasted in the oven, except my polenta. But this is a nice Italian meal. Okay, you I'm you want to fix the problem? You vote. Mm. And guess what? You get to vote 21 times a week. Ooh, every meal. I got that one. I got that one. Okay. Three times seven. Three meals a day, seven days in the week. You can, all, times yeah. you week. can all change the world. Oh, Everyone. That's really powerful. I love that. So what we've got here, we've got vitamins, minerals, nutrients, enzymes, antioxidants, fiber, water, enzymes. What else? <laughs> Did you say that? No trans fats. No, no trans fats. No trans, 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 trans sugar. sugar. No sugar added, but amazing. you will taste the natural occurring sugar in everything. Okay, so this it's is going to go here. All right, guys, um, are you guys ready? We're ready. Okay, so I'm going to put a little polenta here. Yeah, just plate one up so they can really see the beauty of it. Oh, yeah, so this and is going to go like this. Oof. Oh, do you, are you loving it? Oh, look at that, colorful. Oh, Ooh. my God, I am just like, I'm, my, my mouth. My. And then we got to take it right from here. Crazy. And I put the skin side down, and then it just, you just scoop right there. It just stays. I'm just gonna get this little, this little, the cheese, cheesy thing right here. Okay, Rob. Rob, you're a oh, no, ladies first. Okay, but we, uh, what we're gonna do actually is show. 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 Beauty. Oh, oh, okay, can you just oh, feel, oh, you just feel how good. There's I mean, a smell of it. it is. The smell of it. We can smell of it. Scratch and sniff right here. <laughs> All right, right sir. It, oh, ladies first. Okay, I will take it. I will take it. Amazing. Put this here. We need enough of the crew. Yep, they've so got salmon. We've got everything we'll going on. We'll, we'll share. share. We'll cut it. We'll cut it. Okay, here you go. And except for the salmon, Cindy, this was relatively pretty cost effective. Oh, the Family salmon. You, uh, that's why I put the ricotta cheese. Because when you put the cheese in there, you don't need as much of the fish. You can only have two ounces of fish because you got the cheese to make the whole protein. So you okay. probably have enough to be, what, 20 people almost? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would say. I would say. I would say, well, with you guys? Yeah, maybe. 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 Yeah, maybe, yeah. Too. maybe I, too. I'm not sharing. <laughs> Here we go. Wow. Thank you. Awesome. 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 All right. All right, well, I think I got to take a bite right now. Okay, you do have to take a bite. I, you guys I don't need a You, you get to no. vote. <laughs> no. I know, it's like a weird thing, right? Yeah, I don't need to. Rosie, are you going to take a vote? It's, it's just so weird. I always just let you go. That's done. I know. What's that? You're going to vote? I'm, I'm voting. You're voting. I'm voting. You're voting. This is my lunch vote for the day. 
Okay. And it is 100% delicious, nutritious, magicalness for my belly, for my gut, for my liver, for my mitochondria. For your brain. For my brain. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'm a total rock star right now. Thanks, Mom. Thanks. Me see you. Yeah. All those craziness that I did when you were little, I made up for. Yeah. We gotta come closer yeah. this okay, way. So and remember talking to that. Come in. Look at these guys. Show oh your God. play. Okay. okay. Show your play. Okay. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. Vote. 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 Voting. Vote. They're voting. I right mean, we all need those stickers. I voted. I, I think voted. I need to vote right now. Yeah. <laughs> vote all right. right now. So thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank you. Remember, if we can change the food. Change. You can change the future. future. Protect your liver and feed your gut. That's it. And this is, is exactly how. Right? I love it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Next week. Join us next week. Bye. Thanks, White Pony, that bon always bon cares about a bon appetit. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Lustig, my good friend. Thank you, Dominic, for Most changing long. the food. Thanks for us for being the best. Aww, I love you, Bye, guys. Bye.